we are going to derive the equation for the period of a mass oscillating on a spring. What we have over here is a mass on a spring. There's a frictionless surface here. It's going to oscillate back and forth between positions A and C. Position B is x equals 0. That's the equilibrium position for the spring and the whole system. This would be amplitude. This would be negative amplitude. So it's going back and forth between those. Now we know because of Hooke's law, uh, that or using Hooke's law, the force exerted on the block is going to be equal to negative k, which is the spring constant, times x, which is the position of the box. And we also know that the sum of all of the forces in the x direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. That's Newton's second law. So what I'm going to do is set these two equal to each other because the spring force is the only force acting on the block in the x direction. So I get negative kx is equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction. And then I'm going to isolate acceleration in the x direction by dividing each side by m. So I get acceleration in the x direction is equal to negative k times x over m. Now there's something I want you to notice here. I want you to notice that um, k and m are scalar constants. So they cannot have a direction associated with them. So the fact that we have two vectors here, acceleration in the x direction and position, um, and then there's a negative sign here, that tells us that a and x must have opposite signs or must be in opposite directions. And this makes sense because um, remember that the whole cause of simple harmonic motion is a restoring force. So if my box is over here, my position of the box is positive. The force is always acting to restore the box back to equilibrium. So the force would be acting in the negative direction, pushing the box back to the left. Therefore, the acceleration, which has to be in the same direction as the force, according to Newton's second law, because mass is a scalar, force is also going to, or acceleration is also going to be back towards the equilibrium position. If the box is in the negative position over here, now the spring is compressed. So the force is pushing it back to the right, back towards the equilibrium, the acceleration is back towards the right. So um, acceleration and position are always going to be in opposite directions, like shown by this equation right here. Now, if I were to write an equation for the motion of this block as it's oscillating back and forth, I could write an equation. Um, I would use a sine or cosine. It doesn't matter which one you use. Um, it just depends on the sine and cosine will just have different starting points. So a sine function will start at zero. A cosine function will start at a maximum. Or a negative cosine will start at a minimum. So I'm going to use the sine function, but it doesn't really matter. So uh, position is equal to the amplitude times the sine of omega, which is angular frequency. So that's 2 pi over t times time. And then I could write an equation for my velocity. I know that my velocity is going to be whatever coefficient is in front of the t here, we multiply that on the outside. So we get 2 pi over t times amplitude times the cosine of angular frequency, which is 2 pi over t times time. And that's my equation for velocity. Um, this is just a derivative. And if you're not doing calculus yet, you can always just sketch it out. Uh, your sine is going to be like this. This is a positive sign. And then if you think about the slope of that, because we know that the slope of position versus time graph gives us velocity. So here our slope is positive. So we'd start there as positive. 
then our slope is zero, so that would be zero. And then our slope is negative, so that would be negative. Slope is zero, back to zero. Slope is positive, back to positive. And then you can just sketch it out and say, oh, look, I have a cosine curve. And then you'll know to make it a cosine. And then our acceleration is equal to negative um, 2 pi over t squared because we are going to take whatever the coefficient is here and multiply it there so we get a squared a times sine of 2 pi whatever is in the parentheses is always the same times t. Okay, so why is there a negative sign here? Because if I think about the slope of my velocity versus time to absolute position, this is velocity, this is acceleration. My slope here is zero, so I start at zero acceleration. My slope is negative, so I got a negative. Slope is zero, go back to zero. Slope is positive, go to positive. Slope is zero, go back to zero. So this makes a negative sign curve. It goes down first and then up. Ooh, it's a little off there. So if, you, if you're if you doing calculus, you should know that the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So that's where that negative, sign, negative comes from. It really just comes from the slope of the cosine graph. So these are the equations of motion. Of course, capital T is the period of motion. And what we're going to do is we are going to use these two equations and this equation up here. So I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to plug it in for position because this gives me the equation for position at any time in the oscillation. And then I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to plug it in for acceleration because this is the equation for acceleration at any time in the motion. So once I combine those two together, I get negative 2 pi over t squared times the acceleration times the sine of 2 pi over period times time equals, so that's just basically this equation right here, equals negative k over m times my equation for position, which is this one up here. So times a times sine of 2 pi over period times t times time. And now we can see that a ton of things cancel out. So let's cancel out our a's. Let's cancel out our negative signs. Let's cancel out our sine there, and then what we're left with is 2 pi over period squared equals k over m. So we just have to do a little bit of rearranging. This may start looking familiar to you. And let's square root each side, so we get 2 pi over t equals the square root of k over m. And then we're going to take the inverse of each side and multiply by 2 pi, and we get t equals 2 pi oops, times the square root of m over k. And that is the equation for a mass oscillating back and forth on a spring.